In this episode, part three of how Game of Thrones uses Robert Greene's 48 Laws of Power, I'm going to cover the final set of 16 lessons based on stories and characters from George R. R. Martin's iconic series. Law 33. Discover each man's thumbscrew. Everyone has a weakness, a gap in the castle wall. That weakness is usually an insecurity, writes Green, an uncontrollable emotion or need. It can also be a small secret pleasure. Either way, once found, it is a thumbscrew you can turn to your advantage. Thumbscrew, or weakness, or manipulation, is often used in Game of Thrones. This is a good method that both Varys and Littlefinger use throughout the series. They both send out informants to discover weaknesses and deep dark secrets in others. I did what I did for the good of the realm. Law 34. Be royal in your own fashion. Act like a king to be treated like one. The way you carry yourself will often determine how you are treated. In the long run, appearing vulgar or common will make people disrespect you. For a king respects himself and inspires the same sentiment in others. By acting confident in your powers, you make yourself seem destined to wear the crown. The best example here is perhaps Zaro Zoan Daxos, which I may be saying wrong, one of the many men who tried to persuade Daenerys to marry him. In reality, he's more obsessed with marrying her to improve his own wealth and status, which means he's also projecting a false image to her. Law 35. Master the art of timing. Never seem to be in a hurry. Hurrying betrays a lack of control over yourself and over time. Always seem patient as if you know that everything will come to you eventually. Become a detective of the right moment. Sniff out the spirit of the times. Trends that will carry you into power. Learn to stand back when the time is not yet ripe and to strike fiercely when it has reached fruition. Here we can think of Tyrion Lannister. While helping to save King's Landing, he's often patient over all else. For the most part, this works for him because he's giving himself time to think, and timing is everything. Law 36. Disdain things you cannot have. Ignoring them is the best revenge. By acknowledging a petty problem, you give it existence and credibility. The more attention you pay an enemy, the stronger you make him. And a small mistake is often made worse and more visible when you try to fix it. It is sometimes best to leave things alone. If there is something you want but cannot have, show contempt for it. The least interest you reveal, the more superior you seem. Here you can think of the Lannisters, who truly want everything, but they seem to ignore the North to some degree, or look down on it because it's so vast and cold, at least they say. As such, they also look down on people from the North. They'd like to control this area, deep down, but they're unable to do so, so they treat it like something less than. Law 37. Create Compelling Spectacles Striking imagery and grand symbolic gestures create the aura of power. Everyone responds to them. Stage spectacles for those around you, then full of arresting visuals and radiant symbols that heighten your presence. Dazzled by appearances, no one will notice what you're really doing. In this example, think of the Purple Wedding, where Joffrey married Marjorie Tyrell. Coincidentally, this is also where Joffrey met his maker. These two rich families used the wedding to showcase their wealth, but in reality there was much more going on underneath the surface. And despite the war going on elsewhere, they both wanted to show strength. Law 38. Think as you like, but behave like others. If you make a show of going against the times, flaunting your unconventional ideas in unorthodox ways, people will think that you only want attention and that you look down upon them. They will find a way to punish you for making them feel inferior. It's far safer to blend in and nurture the common touch. Share your originality only with tolerant friends and those who are sure to appreciate your uniqueness. In the politicized world of Game of Thrones, it's better to be careful with public speech but think how you wish. Here again we think of Littlefinger. He's not from royalty, but he smiles and acts how he thinks he should act in public. Even though he has a different outlook on life and different intentions with his own life, he keeps everything close to the chest. Law 39. Stir up waters to catch fish. Anger and emotion are strategically counterproductive. You must always stay calm and objective. But if you can make your enemies angry while staying calm yourself, you gain a decided advantage. Put your enemies off balance. Find the chink in their vanity through which you can rattle them and you hold all the strings. This refers to stirring up calmness to see how others react, of course. So we think of Tyrion, but also his sister Cersei. Both know how to stir up the other and many people around them. Why are you here? I wanted to see your face. Law 40. Despise the free lunch. 
What is offered for free is dangerous. It usually involves either a trick or hidden obligation. What has worth is worth paying for. By paying your own way, you stay clear of gratitude, guilt, and deceit. It is also wise to pay the full price. There is no cutting corners with excellence. Be lavish with your money and keep it circulating, for generosity is a sign and a magnet of power. If we think back to the first seasons, there's Daenerys' brother, Viserys Targaryen. He has a miserable life, and many people have used him through his life to get what they wanted. He treated his sister in the same way, but it didn't work out so well for him. The gift is actually a curse. Daddy, please! A crown for king. Law 41. Avoid stepping into a great man's shoes. What happens first always appears better and more original than what comes after. If you succeed a great man or even have famous parents, you will have to accomplish double their achievements to outshine them. Do not get lost in their shadow or stuck in the past, not of your own making. Establish your own name and identity by changing course. Say the overbearing father, disparage his legacy, and gain power by shining in your own way. In this example of riding coattails, we think of Rob Stark. He felt the need to follow in his father's footsteps, but despite the fact that he wasn't ready to take over, he was forced into a position where he was required to be perfect, and that was just too much for him. Law 42. Strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. Trouble can often be traced to a single strong individual, the stirrer, the arrogant underling, the poison of goodwill. If you allow such people room to operate, others will succumb to their influence. Do not wait for the troubles that cause to multiply. Do not try to negotiate with them. They are irredeemable. Neutralize their influence by isolating or banishing them. Strike at the source of the trouble and the sheep will scatter. Former Night's Watch leader Mance Raider is a solid example here because he was cast out despite being able to unite various clans of people together. He was a once in a generation leader so without him the sheep scattered. Law 43. Work on the hearts and minds of others. Coercion creates a reaction that will eventually work against you. You must seduce others into wanting to move in your direction. A person you have seduced becomes your loyal pawn. And the way to seduce others is to operate on their individual psychologies and weaknesses. Soften up the resistance by working on their emotions, playing on what they hold dear and what they fear. Ignore the hearts and minds of others and they will grow to hate you. This again is something Melisandre does as she moves throughout the Game of Thrones. She's got her own worldview and philosophy, but she continually uses it to create a cult-like presence when she speaks to anyone. But even those who don't worship the Lord can serve his cause. Law 44. Disarm and infuriate with the mirror effect. The mirror reflects reality, but it's also the perfect tool for deception. When you mirror your enemies doing exactly as they do, they cannot figure out your strategy. The mirror effect mocks and humiliates them, making them overreact. By holding up a mirror to their psyches, you seduce them with the illusion that you share their values. By holding up a mirror to their actions, you teach them a lesson. Few can resist the power of the mirror effect. Daenerys Targaryen uses this superpower as she meets new people, but specifically in the very beginning, she figures out how to survive in her relationship with Drago, eventually learning how to lead these people. She says she will don her floppy ears. Law 45. Preach the need for change, but never reform too much at once. Everyone understands the need for change in the abstract, but on the day-to-day -day level, people are creatures of habit. Too much innovation is traumatic and will lead to revolt. If you are new to a position of power or an outsider trying to build a power base, make a show of respecting the old way of doing things. If change is necessary, make it feel like a gentle improvement of the past. This is good advice for any leader as it's more motivational than action-centric, but here we think of Hisdar, a former slave trader at Slaver's Bay, who argued for and against the fighting pits which created his family's wealth. Is it justice to answer one crime with another? Law 46 never appear too perfect. Appearing better than others is always dangerous, but most dangerous of all is to appear to have no faults or weaknesses. Envy creates silent enemies. It is smart to occasionally display defects and admit to harmless voices in order to deflect envy and appear more human and approachable. Only gods and the dead can seem perfect with impunity. The Dragon Queen is in play once more here. She knows when to stop because there are so many moving pieces to be a leader, but this may have led to her downfall in the end. 
Law 47, do not go past the mark you aim for. In victory, learn when to stop. The moment of victory is often the moment of greatest peril. In the heat of victory, arrogance and overconfidence can push you past the goal you had aimed for. And by going too far, you make more enemies than you defeat. Do not allow successes to go to your head. There is no substitute for strategy and careful planning. Set a goal, and when you reach it, stop. There are several examples here, but let's look to Robert Baratheon once more. He's good at campaigning, but then unable to deliver as a king. He didn't have the stomach to do much of the actual work, which needed to be done. And finally, Law 48. Assume formlessness. By taking a shape, by having a visual plan, you open yourself to attack. Instead of taking a form for your enemy to grasp, keep yourself adaptable and on the move. Accept the fact that nothing is certain and no law is fixed. The best way to protect yourself is to be as fluid and formless as water. Never bet on stability or lasting order because everything changes. One could say Bran is a good example here. As Tyrion says, he couldn't walk so he learned to fly. But let's also discuss Jon Snow. Despite what was going on around him, he decided that nothing was permanent, growing up as a bastard and then being sent to the Night's Watch. That said, Arya Stark is also a good example, and really, everyone living in the final season needed some flexibility and some formlessness just to make it to the other side and survive the Game of Thrones. I'm sure there's some other examples here, so please feel free to reference your favorite scenes or characters in the comments. Make sure to also go back and watch video 1 and 2 if you missed those, so you understand all 48 of these rules of power. And check the references below for more info and also a link to Robert Greene's masterful book, The 48 Laws of Power.